Are you ready? Let's go. He says that he's outsmarted a couple of trainers. Hi, welcome to Animal News. I'm Joan Ranquet, your host, and this is my co-host, Olivia. Um, today we're going down to South Florida to talk to some animals all over, and then we also have a wonderful segment sent in from our dog correspondent, Chris Gaba, in Wisconsin. So, let's go ahead, Olivia. She's got to cover some other stories. Go on. And uh, I'm going to cut now to the headline news, animal news. This is just in from the United Animal Nations. Horses won a victory with the United States House of Representatives. They passed H.R. 503, which bans the slaughter of horses in the U.S. More than 90,000, count them, 90,000 horses were slaughtered in the U.S. every year at foreign-owned slaughterhouses. Horse meat is not eaten in the United States, but is actually exported to Europe and Asia, where it's actually considered a delicacy. And then this is just in from the Humane Society. Recent reports have indicated that a particularly nasty type of cancer has shown up in cats. It's called the vaccine-associated sarcoma. Experts in feline medicine, immunology, and cancer treatment have teamed up to form the Vaccine-Associated Feline Sarcoma Task Force. They have created some suggestions. Number one, discuss with your veterinarian which vaccines he or she recommends. Number two, Talk with your veterinarian about how frequently your cat should be vaccinated. Number three, don't be afraid to ask your veterinarian for more information if you're not sure what is best for your cat. Number four, continue to have your cat examined by your veterinarian every year. You can get more information by going to the Humane Society website, and we will certainly be following vaccine-associated feline sarcoma. And I personally think that vaccines are a choice and that it's something you want to talk to your veterinarian about as far as maybe getting a titer test and seeing what antibodies your animal has. And the best defense against any sort of illness or a vaccine-related fallout is always, always, always building the immune system. So when we come back here in a moment, we're going to go to Fort Lauderdale and meet Bella. says that she's a great friend, that, um, that a lot of times she feels a, a little bit like she's the entertainer here. When I was waiting for you to get here, she was sitting on the railing, digging around, trying to catch her tail, and I'd just sit there and laugh. Well, she lives to do that. <laughs> um, and I don't know if she's feeling sorry for you or what, just that you need entertainment. Oh, but, um, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm kidding. She's, she just likes, she feels really <laughs> loves to entertain you. But she does spend a lot of time by herself, <laughs> which, you know, with someone that's that shy, I'm just kind of wondering if maybe a companion isn't the worst idea to kind of pull her out of herself. Have you been thinking about a companion? It has entered my mind. Okay. Um... But I also thought of just having people over more often. Because no, technically we're not allowed to have more than one pet here. Oh, you're not? Mm -mm. Well, I mean, there's a part of her that's pretty sociable. I mean, she's certainly she is. sociable once, with you. She's once, when I have company that stay for several weeks, she's perfectly normal. Yeah. And if someone's here more than a few minutes, but they've been replacing the roof and things like that, so she's been spooked spooked lately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's many times there have been other people and she kind of watches people when you're not home. She watches. Mm -hmm. It's like she's a great observer of humans. Yes. In the beginning of her life she was kind of, I get a sense that something pretty terrible happened to her mother and she was taken immediately by people that thought that they were being thoughtful and helpful and what have you. I also have a sense that there were one or two other kittens taken at that time and that um, she was somehow separated from them. And mm -hmm, she was. So that feeling of, do you know anything then about her mother? Nothing. She thinks her mother was hit by a car. 
and that people reacted quickly in order to help, but I don't think they realized that how abrupt they were with her. And she wanted you to know how much you, she loves you, by the way. Um, she says, you know, that, that she really likes stability. So I guess I would consider with the amount of um, stability that, that you crave also of on occasion doing things in a loving way that change things up so that she knows that that's safe. Okay. Like even today, these two chairs are going to be over here. And that's safe. Because, I mean, I don't even know if she... Res does she respond to furniture being moved? Uh, I usually don't move the furniture. See? Nothing, <laughs> nothing changes. So if, in order to kind of get her a little more flexible, I would start changing little things. Okay. Almost just for drill. Okay. To make it okay if we change things. Okay. Because, I mean, are there, is there a part of you that's fearing a change? No. Then no. she's, this is her own little karma then, and it's not <laughs> something. And therefore, you know, I think that it'd be good to kind of help her along with that. And now a word from our horse correspondent, Chris. Hi, I'm Chris Bennings in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Dancing Horses Stable, with your daily horse tip. Horses are naturally outdoor animals used to eating and roaming around big pastures. So if you live in a barn like this, where they're in the stalls the most of the time, remember that turnout is key. And a good rule of thumb is one horse per one acre. Remember, horses also are herd animals and like to be around other horses. So keep your horses happy and turn them out with other horses. Back to you, Joan. And now we're going to go to Fort Lauderdale to Central Park Doggy Daycare and meet Buddy. Buddy is a three-year-old dog who in his three short years here on planet Earth has lived in four homes. And we're going to see just what sort of an impact that's had on him. He says he can be intimidating if you don't know I'm funny. <laughs> he says the biggest thing that he's gone through in his life, I think, is um, just that he has continually, until you came along, been misunderstood. So no one's ever quite gotten him. <clears throat> That's why I finally asked him, you know, what his history was, because it just seems like He's been misunderstood and then overlooked. It's almost as if he, he was intimidated by other dogs. I, I have a sense, actually, one of the homes he was in, he kind of got pummeled by a pretty big dog repeatedly. And what's happened is, especially how is he around big dogs now? He, he's definitely an alpha dog. He's got to show them. I mean, he'll just... Yeah. Go after them to show them that he... He's like doing the fake it till you make it sort of thing. He's jumping out there as the, especially with bigger dogs, it seems to me. Seems like with big dogs, he's just got to let them know right up front what's what. And it seems like it's uh, anything from Great Danes to Chocolate Labs to, I think it was a Chocolate Lab, to be quite honest, that went after him. And there may have been like a Rottweiler mix. Um, so there have been... Yeah, it's actually heartbreaking. I mean, he really, really got beaten up in, I think, home number two. I would really just let him know how much you're handling things and that you're on top of uh, the game because I think that's going to help with the bigger dogs. Because it's almost like if you're the bigger dog to the big dogs, then he has no reason to go after them. And if you're the bigger dog to him... I mean, if he's, if he's alpha dog, you're super bitch. Since we moved in with a big dog, Kyra, he, he had shown some aggression to her and bit her in the ear, and I'm wondering if that's going to, if he can be friends with her. and. What kind of a dog is she? She's, a, I think, an Irish wolfhound Bouvier. Well, for one thing, I mean, it seems like he thinks that he has kind of um, 
not backed her into a corner, but he's let her know who he is. But the one thing I would really encourage you to do is, and it's not going to sound very nice to him, is that was her house first, and she is um, more frail than him, and that's being kind of a bully. So I don't think there would be aggression if you could, at this point, really set the hierarchy up. And one of the ways I do this is... This is going to look really dumb, but um, I would do it like this. You're just going to make a list. I'm going to make the list for you now. I like to put uh, everybody in the order of appearance or what have you first and then put it on the fridge so you get this subliminal message. Once we know what the boundary is, then we know who we are. And if he can keep pushing the boundary and be mildly aggressive, then we are defined as mildly aggressive. But if you could push the boundary back and say, no, you know what, we know you're a good and responsible dog, and you need to play by the rules, then that there's a much easier time. And I know that's hard, because look at that face. But if you don't, it's called loving a dog to death. Dustin the cat guy here in Bluffton, South Carolina. Did you know that a cat can become pregnant by the age of six months and can have up to five litters of cats a year? Also, by the age of seven, a cat can be responsible for up to 420,000 cats. Welcome back. Now we're going to go down to Wellington, Florida, where we're going to meet Sven. Sven is a Swedish warm blood who has won many, many awards in Hunters. He's actually, for the last four years, been on top of the game. He's been ridden by Michelle Blair, and he's now going to be retired and be ridden by his owner, Jim Webster. Let's see how Sven feels about that. He says that he loves his job. He loves being. He loves to jump. Is he a great jumper? Yes, yeah, that's his forte. Yeah, he thinks he's the best. But he also says he's got a lot of character, and that's what people love about him. Yes. Uh, he's like a very expressive jumper. Yeah. Um, he says, people just love me. <laughs> and he also says people really love you, too. Like, when you guys go places, you're very yeah. social. Um, do, do, yeah, do you that's know? that's all, yeah. It's been very well known in Florida and the whole horse show scene because he has personality. Yeah. And he jumps well. He, he's very methodical. Right, because he's, you know, that's the Swedish mentality. He knows his landings. Yeah, he's very good at finding his distance. You know, he knows all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, it seems like he knows his landings as well as he knows yeah. his takeoff. Yeah. The last right. two years have been really great yeah. for him, he said, because you were with her. And uh, he says that also she's very charismatic as a rider, mm -hmm. and together they're just like, yeah. they fly. He says that she has a real ability to just sort of point him and allow him to do what he wants to do. She's not very, she's, she really has faith in him. Yeah, yeah she As runs a, in very loose range, yeah. soft. Whereas it feels like the person before wasn't as loose range. No. And that was more, he, he, he doesn't get feisty, but he gets ornery. Ornery, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, so this, this Michelle is, was, rode him the best anyone of your trainers that has ridden him. Um, and she only drives him if she has to, but she knows he knows his job. Mm -hmm. he, it seems like he's also very much a perfectionist, like he'll be mad at himself if he hits a rail. So Yeah, I think he gets upset. Yeah, he's got, and I think if he doesn't do well, he kind of doesn't pout, but he, he could pout. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think when you go away, he right. pouts. <laughs> um, he says that you loved who he was because you wanted a horse with this much character. Yeah. He said, you're excited about showing him because, um, now you've done some showing? Yes. But you're going to, this year you're yeah, taking over. And uh, he says that, that you like to prepare mentally for yeah. um, all of it. It's almost like you have a checklist in your mind of what you're, you know, like right. you know what yeah. the course is, but you also know what your seat is and that you're, that that's the way you like to 
B. Did someone uh, beat it into you that you had to really look at the fence? Yes. Yeah. And he says that now you're you're much right. better at really that you really watch the fence, and that that's good. Um, and he says that you always remember to keep your heels down. Do you? Or, do, I think so. Yeah. You, well, he says that you've got good right. balance. Um, he says. But when you're forward in you know in your jumping position, that you could you could remember your heels a little more. So do you keep your heels down? Yeah, I do keep my heels down. That's fine. My biggest thing is I get tense. I get nervous. You know, <clears throat> then I get too tense, and then he feels that. He's I think that's what he was very trying. sensitive to my uh, state of mind. Yeah, I know. He says that sometimes to the left, you're both you're a little more stiff. Do you? Yeah, and he's stiffer. To, we're both stiffer to the left. Yeah, and particularly in the canter. I mean, it feels like if, if he gets a little stiff, it's sort of right where you would sit in the saddle. I mean, there's just like a little spot right there that's kind of... Yeah, that's what he has chiropractic work and massage for. Okay. And then it seems like on the left side, and maybe this is why you're both more stiff, um, the left side, the, it's like the saddle is uneven or his back is uneven. So there's a little more pressure on the right side where the saddle, where you sit and there's less on the left side. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know if you want to, yeah, you know. something's out of balance. Yeah, think about looking at yeah. the saddle. You, you scared yourself. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, as a matter of fact, I want to just kind of, do you mind if I poke on his back? Because yeah. he's, it's, I'll show you where it feels like to me. Okay, are you gonna let me in here? It's almost like right, right there. Mm -hmm. well, I'll have to check that out. Yeah. And um, so this side is the saddle feels like it feels okay, but this side, side. is not. All right. I'll and check that out. that's what I was trying to say when a minute ago. So that may have everything to do with yeah. why the left right. is a little because it's harder yeah. to get the right shoulder around. Right shoulder around. Um, and then also. I mean, he feels good, butt and hips, but just seems like because this is something old, and then the saddle kind of exacerbates it, that his um, his sacrum, everything could be a little more flexible. Yeah. Like he loses a little bit of flexibility from here back. I mean, he's not bad, certainly, but that's something that could. Yeah. Yeah. That's good to yeah. The right shoulder feels like it's a little, again, probably because of this spot right in there. Um, and then the right pole, which does I mean it would make sense that that's all just sort of connected. And so around to the left, it's going to be a little more of a, oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's fast. He thinks he's fast, and he doesn't go to go fast enough. <laughs> Sometimes when he takes off with me, he's fast. It feels bad. <laughs>
Absolutely. It's a great way to let, let the parents know that, hey, my dog's having a good time while he's away. And now we're going into the animal kingdom, where we're going to go with Chris Gaba, our dog correspondent, to Dog Days of Wisconsin. During the Dog Days of Summer, now you can take your dog to Dog Days of Wisconsin, a camp for dogs and their people. Owned by Jackie Jordan, co-owner of Central Bark Doggy Daycare. The staff has put together amazing activities and sessions that last all day long, things like doggy massage, tea touch, canoeing at 6 a.m., Ice Age Walk, which is a hike with your dog through the glacial forest that formed to create the Great Lakes, and best of all, power lounging, which is just hanging out with your dog. Then there are the high energy activities, like dock diving. Now even the dogs are competing for big air. And agility, which is of course just plain fun. Frisbee. This was taught by Mayor Potts, who with her dog Scout holds the title of International Freestyle Frisbee Champion. And luring. A game created for sight hounds where a plastic baggie is attached to a string and is pulled around a course and the dogs compete against the clock. And then there's the people activities that the dogs have to endure. Every session there's a special guest and our dog correspondent Chris Gaba and his junior camp counselor Samantha are standing by to talk to Sister Pauline Quinn who started the most successful prison rehabilitation program in the American penal system for both men and women, and it is now in Canada and Italy. Okay, hi, this is Chris Gaba with ANN Animal News Network here in Almond, Wisconsin at Dog Days of Wisconsin, which is a summer dog camp for your dogs and their people too. And I'm here with an amazing woman. I'm here with Sister Pauline Quinn, who 25 years ago started a program called the Prison Dog Program. Can you, can you tell me a little bit about the program? Well, it's a wonderful program where inmates train dogs to help the handicap or they rescue dogs from the humane societies and uh, train them to uh, help the disabled or... Uh, train them to be good citizens and place them out in the community. So since then, that program has grown into about how many other states is the program in now? Oh, many, many states. I've never really kept track of all the states, but I understand there's close to 200 programs. Wow. Wow. That must be exciting it, for it, you. it is very exciting because I know so many people are being helped, and it's wonderful what people are volunteering their time and doing. Great, great. And here, here at camp this weekend, we had an opportunity to see, see a film called Within These Walls that was yes. about this particular program and about right. your life. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, it, it's a program that Ellen Burstyn uh, had uh, done for a lifetime, and it's about the prison dog programs, the first one I started back in 1981. And it's a, uh, a wonderful, uh, it shows many good things about how the inmates uh, turn their lives around and the struggles they have in prison and how the dogs help them feel again and, and open up their hearts. I know we had a packed house and there wasn't a dry eye. Um, today, it, I, you, you told some stories about what else you're doing in your life, and mm -hmm. it sounds like you're, you're helping kids in the Philippines, mm -hmm. and you, you've been involved with a couple of wars and refugees. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, I, I like to help other people, especially those in the third world countries, and I brought uh, people in from El Salvador, children who needed medical care, and also I helped uh, uh, bring some wounded soldiers from the Bosnian Gulf War. And it's, it makes me feel good to be able to do something for other people. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure having you here this weekend. Well, thank you so much. You you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, and blessings to you, blessings to all the species in your family, and don't forget to bless Mother Earth. See you next week.